All right, so by now we should be able to look at these uh, factored rational functions and understand that there is a potential whole at x equals negative 1 for this function, a vertical asymptote at negative x equals negative 2, and a 0 at x equals negative 3. And, you'll, and if you look down the line, you should see like x equals negative 1 is a possible whole for all of them. So we're going to look at three different possibilities as we try to figure this out. So um, the first is we are just going to find the limit as x approaches negative 1 of this function. And that allows us to um, cancel out, whoops, cancel out the x plus 1s. We cancel them out. And now we plug in x equals negative 1, so we get negative 1 plus 3 over negative 1 plus 2. And what we find is that we get 2 over 1. So we now know that the whole is at negative 1, 2. So that's, that's the first and most common way that this works out is that you, you, you plug in uh, or you cancel out, you plug in and you get an answer of negative 1, 2 and that is the location of the hole and just so we can kind of see it, negative 1, 2, we would draw this hole and this graph would go through there somewhere. I'm not going to do the details all the way out. Okay, so that's option number one. Option number two is something like this. Again, we should be looking at it and going, oh yeah, hole it at negative 1, vertical asymptote at negative 2, and a 0 at negative 3, all potentials. So we are going to find the limit as x approaches negative 1 of this function. And I am going to take this square and I'm going to write it out. I'm going to write it out the long way. That way we can see how things really cancel out. And so we do that. And then we cancel out, and we get that. Um, and we'll notice we still get a negative 1 up there. So when we go to plug in x equals negative 1, we get negative 1 plus 1, negative 1 plus 3, over negative 1 plus 2. And when we evaluate this, we'll get 0 times uh, 2 over 1 which equals zero. So what we have is a hole actually located at a zero. So we gotta be careful. This hole that is located at zero, um, I guess I should write where the hole is, it's at negative one, zero, is right there at negative one, zero, and it's a hole. So it's not really a zero, but yet you can cross the x-axis there. So we just need to be aware of it, that, that uh, we can have a hole at zero. Um, the last possibility is something like this where we have the square on the bottom. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to write it all out. So the limit as x approaches negative 1 of this, x plus 1, x plus 3, x plus 2, x plus 1, x plus 1, we start out exactly the same way. We start canceling, and we cancel. And then we go to plug in. And when we go to plug in here, what we'll get is negative um, 1 plus 3 over negative 1 plus 2, and negative 1 plus 1. And we'll get an answer of 2 over 1 times, whoops, times 0, which is uh, 2 divided by 0, which is d and e. So we look for the location of the hole. We found out the location of the hole does not exist. So what this means is it's a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1. So if we were to sketch the graph, we would just do it this way. So we've got those three possibilities. Um, they're kind of quick ways you can see them, but there, there they are. The most typical. When you look for the hole, the location of the hole, you find a location. The second most typical is when you look for the hole, you find out the location's at zero, uh, the y-coordinate. When I say location, I mean the y-coordinate. 
And the third example where you find the location and you find out there is no location, so it's a vertical asymptote. So those are the three possibilities of, uh, of, where, of how to find the zeros. Um, I'm sorry, how to find the location of the hole.